Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will be talking about the pre-patch for Dragonflight that just started today and I will try to answer the question that I got quite a lot recently, how can we make some gold with the pre-patch and during this pre-patch. So what I will do is first I'm going to go through what will be available with this pre-patch and what could be some of the new ways you can make some gold with the new additions from the pre-patch and then I will just explain what I think are some of the good ways right now to still make some decent gold before the release of Dragonflight. With the Dragonflight pre-patch you will have two main phases. The first one that will start today is basically including the new talent system, all the new race class combinations and also other things such as the PvP rated solo shuffle. And then on November 15th, we will have the second phase. And this time, you will be able to play the new race, the drag tier. You will be able to go to the new starter zone. And also, you will be able to do the new Riven Dungeon Uldaman and also do the pre patch event, the Primal Storms. So, with all these different like events and all these different activities, you will be able to get a lot of new items and a lot of new things. But unfortunately, none of them can really like make you rich because none of them are binds when equipped. And so unfortunately, all the different items you will be able to get from all these different activities will not really be good in terms of goal making. So for instance, with the pre-patch event, the Primal Storms, many people were hoping that we will get like maybe some toys or some pets like in previous pre-patch uh, that you could then sell on the auction house, but unfortunately this is not the case. So we will be able to get all these like uh, pretty cool appearances and also there is a toy. But as you can see, all these items are either binds when like directly picked up. So for instance, this one, or they are binds uh, to your Blizzard account. And so unfortunately you won't really be able to farm any items that you can then stock up and then sell later in Dragonflight. A good example, for instance, from the Legion pre-patch was the Pocket Fell Spreader. This is a toy that you could farm during the pre-patch event and that was only available during that time. And people are still selling this toy till this day. So it was really something interesting and that a lot of people farmed. But unfortunately, with Dragonflight, uh, we don't really have this type of uh, things. Again, maybe during the second phase and when this new pre-patch event will be launched, we will see that uh, other items might be available. But for now, it's really not sure that we will be able to get anything that you will then be able to sell on the auction house. The only thing I can maybe think of when it comes to all these different activities is the new starter zone for the drag tier. So you will be able to create one of these uh, new drug tier and then to go to the starter zone and in the starter zone you will be able to kill some mobs and some of them might be able to like loot some of the new skins so some of the like green BOEs maybe some people might be interesting to buy them in advance um, I'm not sure especially you need to keep in mind that all the different greens that will drop from the new starter zone are basically all the different sets that you can get uh, with the primal uh, storm events but again as these are pretty like different colorations and everything maybe some people will be interesting in these different green BOE so if you are doing this new star zone maybe try to post all these different green BOEs on the auction house and who knows maybe you will be able to make a couple of sales and also some of these mobs apparently might drop some of the new materials and crafting regions that we will need in Dragon Fight. So if that's the case, then definitely I think farming all these different new regions might be extremely profitable, especially because a lot of people might try to get a lot of them before the start of Dragon Fight to then directly start uh, upgrading all the different professions at the launch. So that's something we'll have to verify when the second phase will launch, but that might be also a very good opportunity to make quite a lot of gold. So unfortunately, really, the pre-patch is not bringing any new ways to make some gold, but you can still do a couple of activities that, in my opinion, will still be pretty decent until the release of Dragonflight. 
So the first thing I can think of, of course, is going to be boosting. I know boosting is something that only a few people can do, but really right now, this is probably the best way to make some gold before the release of Dragonflight, simply because a lot of people want to get all the different mounts that will be removed from the game after the release of Dragonflight. There is, for instance, uh, Jiggle Swarth, uh, Sir, and also, of course, the different... Uh, Keystone Master mount. So this one is also gone after the release of Dragonflight. You also have like a few mounts that will be most, more difficult to get after uh, the release of Dragonflight, such as, for instance, the two mounts from Mythic Sylvanas and Mythic Jailer. So these mounts, definitely a lot of people are so willing to spend quite a lot of gold on them. Um, and yeah, I would say that really boosting is definitely going to be interesting. After that, of course, what I would also recommend you to do is to craft all the different armor pieces for all the different alts that people are currently leveling up. So with all the different experience boosts that are currently in the game and also with the new experience boost that will be included with this pre-patch, a lot of people are currently leveling some alts. Either it's just to like have a lot of different diversity for Dragonflight or simply because they want to have all the different classes at max level, people are leveling a lot of out. So what I would recommend you to do is of course try to craft all the different armor pieces that are the like best in terms of eye level. For instance, the crafter's mark of the first ones and also the crafter's mark for so these ones are from uh, Zerat Portis and you will need to unlock the reputation with the Enlightened in order to get them. What you can also do is craft the different Novice Crafter's Mark. So basically with these different items, you will be able to then create some cool armor pieces that uh, the level 50s will be able to use. So all you want to do is use it here. And as you can see, you will be able to get all these different armor pieces at level 50. And why people might be interested in buying these items? Well, it's pretty simple. When you arrive at level 50 and you want to like queue up for the dungeon uh, finder, you will need to have a pretty decent eye level. And so people usually will buy all these different armor pieces simply to then queue up. And like that, you can level up to level 60 very, very easily. So try to craft some of these armor pieces and I'm sure you will be able to make some sales on many different realms. So after that, of course, we're still going to have all the different legendaries. These ones, I'm really just putting them here, but really just be a little bit careful because, of course, all the legendaries will still be active until at least uh, the second phase of the pre-patch. But it's definitely going to be slower to sell all these different legendaries. So I would only recommend you to uh, craft some and everything if you already have unlocked all these different recipes. Otherwise, it might not be really the best. But if you have already unlocked some of these uh, legendaries, really just try to craft a few. It's so cheap right now with uh, the region-wide auction house. All the different materials are extremely cheap. So just try and you will see if maybe you can still make a couple of sales. I'm personally still selling some of these legendaries, but it's definitely slower. So just something I want to mention. And don't only craft the latest rank, the rank um, um, 7. You can also try and craft the rank um, 6 simply because some people are still also purchasing the rank 6 so it's up to you to see exactly how many of these legendaries you want to craft but this is still something you can do and still something I would consider doing in the pre-patch. After that with the new achievement for the 500 mounts uh, and with the new reward which is this really cool flying mount I'm really happy I'm getting it with uh, the pre-patch. Basically, I'm sure that a lot of people are going to be interested in getting and collecting more mounts. And so I think right now, crafting and farming mounts is going to be pretty good because we are in a period where a lot of people don't really have a lot of things to do. People see this pretty cool mount and they want to get it. And what is usually the first thing you do when you want to increase your collection is simply going to the auction house and to buy the different mounts that are there and that are not too expensive. So really, this is my personal opinion, but I think if you have like some time and you want to make some gold, crafting and farming mounts is going to be very good. 
I made two uh, top like 10 basically of the best mounts you can either farm or that you can craft. So I would definitely encourage you to watch these different videos. But trust me, you have a lot of mounts that you can uh, sell at the moment. And a lot of them, I'm currently selling them for really a lot of gold. So this is really just my personal opinion, but I will really, really encourage you to do that. And keep in mind that also farming mounts or crafting mounts is never something that can go wrong because you can always, after that, wait for Dragonfly to sell them and the mounts will always sell. So after that, of course, you have many different farms that you can also do. Um, I made a recent, like a video recently where I explained what were, in my opinion, all the best farms you could do before the release of Dragonflight. Uh, these includes, for instance, uh, farming the Strange Goop or farming Barry's Guillotine or also other items such as, for instance, the different, uh, like pets you can craft with the Protoform Synthesis Forge in uh, Zeret Mortis or simply farming the different lattices that you can also use then to craft the mounts. You have many different farms, so I would invite you to watch this video. But really keep in mind, even transmog items and things like that, it's always a little bit slower than mounts or than other items. But it's always nice to have all these different items up on the auction house because even if it takes some time, they might sell at some point and you might make a lot of gold in the future with all these different items. Of course, another activity I would recommend you to have a look at is flipping uh, some of the items from the auction house. So it really includes all the different items I already mentioned. But you can also, I'm sure, find other transmog items or things, especially from Shadowlands, that will either have an increase in price later in Dragonflight or that you can simply buy right now and resell for already a lot of gold. So definitely try to have a look and I'm sure you can find some of these items pretty easily. Um, again, keep in mind, flipping is always risky because you invest some gold that you might lose uh, in the process. But if you find some uh, items that you think really are worth investing in, then I would recommend you to do that. And finally, for all of you who are not big fans of the auction house or uh, about just farming in general, what you can do is really enjoy the different raw gold activities that are still available in the pre-patch. All these activities will be available until the second phase, so November 15. But right now, you can still make quite a lot of raw gold by doing the different covenant callings, also with the mission table, and of course, with all the different world quests and all these different things that can also reward you with quite a lot of gold. So really, if I were, if I were you, I would definitely uh, consider doing that if you are not interested in uh, farming transmog items, mounts, or just crafting items in general. And keep in mind, this is only something that will be good until November 15th. And then after that, we will have to wait for Dragonflight uh, to reveal all the different ways we can still make some raw gold. But right now, really is a good moment. So again, if you like raw gold farming, this is perfect for you. So that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I'm sure I'm missing a lot of things. So please don't hesitate to also add more suggestions in the comments. And I will pin your comments if really I agree with your suggestion. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great start of the pre-patch. Bye.